Hey Wheaton North, Mr. Yergler here. Let's talk about solubility. We know from previous units that if something is soluble, then it dissolves. If something is insoluble, then it doesn't dissolve. But there's also levels of, of soluble, and we call those levels solubility. So um, something could be really soluble, it would have high solubility, or something could be not very soluble, it would have low solubility, meaning you can't really dissolve a whole lot of it. So solubility is just how much solute can be dissolved in a given solvent. And usually the solvent here is going to be water. Solute are going to be usually some sort of salt, or you could think of it as sugar as well. Sugar could be the solute. Alright, so let's go get started. Um, let's do a quick vocab review. I'm going to go through this kind of fast. Uh, you should know this. If you don't already know this, then make sure you get it written down. Uh, you can always pause the video anytime you want um, if I'm going too fast and rewind and then, and then you'll get it. Um, okay, so the solute is the substance being dissolved and the solvent is the substance that's doing the dissolving. Usually the solvent is water. Now how does this work? Well, there's what, we're, what we kind of call free water and associated water. Free water is water molecules that are free. They're not bound to anything. They're not attached to anything. Um, and associated water are water molecules that are associated with the solute. So when you put a block of salt, for example, think of like table salt, like sodium chloride, into water, the water molecules are attracted to it because it's ionic, right? It has positive and negative charges. And we know that water is polar. It has a positive end and a negative end. Um, the negative end is the oxygen. So the oxygen end of the molecule is attracted to the positive ions and the, neg and the positive hydrogens are attracted to the negative ions of the salt. These are becoming associated. These are free water molecules that are becoming associated. As they attract each other, they kind of pull off or remove those ions one at a time. Um, usually this happens very quickly because you can dissolve salt in water relatively quickly. But once it's dissolved, any given sodium ion is, a, is associated with a bunch of water molecules. Okay, So these water molecules have pulled that sodium ion off and now it's dissolved. Same thing down here. Notice that on this on this one, now we have a negative ion. That's being attracted to the positive ends of the, of the water molecules, the hydrogens. So if you see that, on the bottom, the water molecules are oriented with the H's towards the ion, and up here, they're oriented with the oxygens towards the ion. When a solute is added to water, the water molecules are attracted to it. This is kind of what I just described, right? Uh, those water molecules pull those solute particles away, and they go from solid to aqueous, or dissolved in water because they're surrounded by water molecules. Okay, This is happening at a very microscopic level, right, an atomic level. And we call this dissociation because the ions are no longer associated with the crystal, with the solid. They're now, they have been dissociated, disassociated from the solid and are now associated with the water. Okay, it's, Think of it kind of like a, it's, a, it's a bad breakup. If you're really attracted to someone else, you're going to disassociate from the original person and now be associated with a new friend group. Okay, another term is just dissolving, right? Dissociation or dissolving. It's really the same thing. Water molecules are constantly attracted to the solute, so they're not floating. They're not going to just like float to the surface and float free. They're always going to be associated with water molecules because of those positive and negative charges. They're either as a salt, as a solid, in, a, in like a block, or they're dissolved with associated water. Okay, notice that the, this chlorine ion has to be attracted to something positive. It could be the water molecule, the hydrogen ends of the water molecule, or it could be the positive ions in, in the salt. It has to be attracted to one of those. If it's solid, it's in here. If it's dissolved, it's like this. Now, this can only happen, the dissolving, the process of dissolving can only happen if there is free water that can do the dissolving. Okay, So, as long as there's still some free water molecules that aren't already associated with any other ion or any other atom, then we can still dissolve more salt. But eventually you get to the point where there's no more free water, right? And the more kinetic energy the water molecules have, the fewer it takes to hold on to them, okay? Because they have more energy. And if fewer are required, then that means you can dissolve more solute at higher temperatures. So temperature increases the solubility, okay? Um, that would be a great summary statement. Temperature increases solubility. Now, there's several other factors that affect the rate of dissolving. There's also surface area and, te and temperature and stirring. Okay, let's look at temperature first. If you heat this up, this is kind of what we just said. If, we, if you heat this up, then it's going 
to, to be able to dissolve more, right? So hot water dissolves more than cold water. Okay, what about surface area? We know from experience that if you put a huge chunk of sugar into water or salt into water, it's not going to dissolve very fast, right? However, if you put small pieces, if, you, if your big clump of salt is broken up into tiny fine pieces, then it dissolves really, really easily, right? The more surface area there is, the more access the water molecules have to those crystal, those uh, that those ions in the crystal, and the water molecules can become associated with those those ions more easily if there's more surface area. Okay, more surface area allows solids to dissolve faster. Then there's also stirring. Now, if you put sugar or salt into a into water and just let it sit there, eventually it will dissolve. It will take a really long time, but eventually it will dissolve. Um, however, you know from experience, if you stir it, that speeds up the rate of dissolving, right? doesn't mean that you're going to dissolve more. It just means that you're going to dissolve it faster, right? Until it, until you've used up all your free water. And the reason this works is because you're you're mixing up the free water and the associated water, so the free water is getting more access to those particles. We've talked about three different type of, types of mixtures, solutions, colloids, and suspens suspensions. Now, we are going to focus just on solutions here cuz even inside of solutions, there's several different types. Uh, three different types, really. The first is an unsaturated solution that that is dilute. Now, most of you know what dilute and concentrated really means. Dilute means you have a small amount of solvent relative to the amount of water that you have. So you have a lot more water than you do solvent, right? If you think of um, Kool-Aid that is too dilute, that means that there's not enough Kool-Aid powder dissolved into the water. So there's lots of free water still available to do more dissolving, right? And we would say that this is unsaturated because it can still dissolve more solute. And dilute means there's really a small amount of solvent in comparison to the amount of water. There's lots of free water, um, not much associated water, so to speak. Now we also have concentrated, right? That means we have more solute um, than solvent. So there's only a little bit of free water, right? And these are kind of relative terms. We kind of define concentrated as more concentrated than something that's dilute, right? So concentrated just means that there's a lot of sol solute dissolved, but it's still unsaturated. So we're still saying there is still some free water, but not a whole lot of it, a little bit of free water. Now, what if we continue to add more solute into it? If you continue to add more and more solute, eventually um, you can get to a saturated solution where no matter how much more you add, there's still, you're never going to be able to dissolve it. No more solute dissolves at this temperature, and that's because there's no more free water. If all of the water molecules, every single water molecule is associated with, another, with a piece of solute, an ion, then if you were to add more, then they can't dissolve because there's no more free water molecules that can that can pull them apart. They're all associated. Okay. Um, some unsaturated solutions look the same, whether they're concentrated or dilute. Think about sugar water. Dilute sugar water looks the same as concentrated sugar water, right? But think about Kool-Aid. Dilute Kool-Aid looks a lot different than concentrated Kool-Aid. Concentrated Kool-Aid looks a lot different a lot darker, right, because you have more solute. And that's just because the solute has a color to it. Sugar doesn't have a color when it's dissolved. And same thing with salt. This is increasing in concentration, right? So the, the most concentrated is the saturated solution. Saturated meaning you can't fit any more solute into it. Even if you were to add more, it just sits at the bottom. And no matter how much you stir it, no matter how much you break it up, it still won't dissolve. There's also a, what we call a super saturated solution. This is when there's even more solute dissolved than you should really be able to have at that temperature. Now, if you can't dissolve any more solute in a saturated solution, then how do you get to be a supersaturated solution? Well, it doesn't happen naturally. In order to do that, you would have to heat it up because remember that temperature affects solubility, right? So here we have a saturated solution. If we were to heat this up, uh, you could dissolve more solute in hotter water, right? Cold water holds less salt than hot water does, okay? So we could heat this up to dissolve it all, and then you create a hot, saturated hot solution, dissolve as much as you can in a hot solution, and then cool it down, and all of that extra solute stays dissolved. Uh, it doesn't come out of solution. It doesn't form a solid. 
Now, supersaturated solutions are kind of what we call fragile. They're unstable. If you disturb them or if you add a little bit of crystal to them, they'll all that extra solute will come out, and you'll be left with um, a saturated solution. Okay? There are lots of YouTube clips that you can look at. If you type in sodium acetate, that's the most common way that people do this, uh, and that's what I'm going to do actually here in a second. There's tons of YouTube videos about it. Um, they're pretty cool to watch. Or you can just watch me. The crystallization process is exothermic, so it releases a lot of heat. So even though I have room temperature solution, um, it's going to get hot as it crystallizes. And this is an important point to remember. The remaining solution is saturated. Not all of the solute comes out, but, as, but all the extra solute comes out of solution and forms a crystal. Okay, so here we are. This is my super saturated solution. So how I made this is I dissolved it, I heated it up to boiling on a hot plate, dissolved as much as I could in that hot solution, and then I cooled it down. Um, so now it's super saturated. It was saturated at that hot temperature, but more can dissolve in a hot temperature than can dissolve in a cool temperature. So when I cool it down, there's actually more dissolved in here than is really supposed to be able to fit. I would not be able to dissolve this much uh, just at room temperature without heating it up. Now, I have to be careful with this because uh, it's very unstable. So I'm going to very carefully pour it, and I lined my um, pan with paper towel because when it crystallizes, it's white, so it, it might be kind of hard to see against the white, against the white pan. So I'm going to open this, kind of pour it gently. Think of it like this. There's a bunch of solute in here that wants, it wants to crystallize. But like any reaction, it, want, it needs an activation energy. So it wants to crystallize, it wants to come out of solution, but it has nowhere to go. So I'm going to provide that little bit of energy. If, if I like shake this, then all of a sudden it'll recrystallize. Okay, so ready? Here we go. I cooled it down to room temperature. It's still a little bit warm, but it, it should work just fine. Okay, so you can see, let me zoom in here. It's recrystallizing a little bit. As I pour it out, it recrystallizes. Right? And if I let that crystal grow, get all the way up into the flask, then let me turn my flask sideways so you can see this. Oop, there it just fell over. I'll have to start over. Build a new build a new mountain. So as it hits that crystal, it has somewhere to go, and so that extra sol solute comes out of solution. I'll let it reach. And it will actually crystallize all the way into my flask. See that? There it goes. It's slowly working its way up. So now I have all this solute crystallized on the side of my flask. Um, and it's like working its way down. See that? And eventually it'll make it to, this, to the surface inside. And now I have, it's all recrystallizing in there. So now I have a completely I can turn this upside down and nothing comes out because it's all solidified. It's recrystallized in there. Um, and I have my little mountain here as well. It look, kind of looks like a little uh, bear sitting on a log, right? It's like artwork. Now, um, there is still a little bit of solution in here. Let me zoom in down here. This is kind of liquidy right here. See that? Um, that's not an unsaturated solution. Not all of the solute came out, but it, all the extra solute came out. So what's left is a saturated solution, and it kind of forms a skin. See the little crystals across, going across the surface, right? Um, it forms like a skin, kind of, and what's left is a saturated solution. Um, so this is, we know is saturated. It has to be. If it was super saturated, then more would have precipitated out, okay? So that is a super saturated solution and recrystallization, and it feels nice and warm because it's exothermic. Pretty cool, right? This is Mr. Yurgler, signing out.